Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So recently I promised a video ranking all of the GT500 cars when it comes to grinding. Now I know this video is a little bit later than I said it would be however it did take a little bit more time than I thought it would and I really give it some thought to how I should really rank these. Should I just go off you know pure pace of the cars or should I kind of put in like the fun factor as well and just kind of how the you know how fun it is to drive how the car feels and all that good stuff and uh, after a bit of thought I thought Do you know what when it comes to grinding it can be such a like boring process sometimes that I thought Do you know what I'm gonna make make the uh, the fun factor sort of the main way of ranking these as well as the time um, so it's kind of based on my opinion of how much fun I had grinding with these you know each individual car that really kind of made this list what it is now a lot of you will probably disagree and say like you know well why not just choose the fastest one well when you're grinding as much money as you need to buy all the cars in the game um yeah it's kind of a bit mind numbing if you're kind of using you know the easiest fastest most boring car which to be honest the majority of the quickest ways to grind money in this game are really really mind numbing uh, stuff like the toyota and such after you've used them like a handful of times uh, it just becomes so second nature that it's almost like you're sort of working on a you know a conveyor belt and uh, you're just sort of doing everything automatically i personally like to grind money but have fun at the same time so a car that sort of moves around that's kind of you know lively and such really kind of i guess enhances my my experience on my way to grinding all these credits to buy all the cars so i really thought in the end that you know fun fact is definitely a big thing when it comes to you know grinding all these credits that we need in gran turismo 7. So when it came to actually doing the grinding methods, I sort of broke them up into two categories. Uh, a couple of months ago, I covered the majority of the 08 methods. So that is like the Lexus SC430, the Honda NSX, the old gen, um, and the Nissan GTR 2008. Um, and then obviously recently, uh, in this last week, I basically cleaned them up and uh, basically cleared out the 16 models which is the NSX Concept GT, uh, the Nissan GTR from 2016 and the Lexus RCF. So I'm not going to break them into categories, it's all just going to be sort of ranked as one class, so the GT500 class. I know these fall into kind of group two in the game, um, but you know at the end of the day they're sort of their own separate things. Um, obviously I believe it's the Mercedes CLK that falls into this category and i obviously have not actually done a method for that yet but it will be coming soon as we basically keep on plodding through basically making every car good at grinding in some sort of way or another so these are all based on sardinia times and how they felt around there um so yeah uh, let's get into the top uh, well i guess top six and uh, yeah enjoy the video guys see you soon So sadly, in last place, we have the GTR GT500 from 2008, coming in at a million credits uh, to purchase. This is the most expensive car. All the others come in around 800k, I believe. Uh, this is the only one that costs a bit more. And to me, sadly, it's probably the most disappointing and I guess least fun to grind. There is potential there um, when it comes to like its overall, you know, time and, and speed and such. However, I feel like the price tag also kind of sort of hinders it when there's better options out there for cheaper. Now, a lot of people really do love this car and I get it, it has a really good racing history, but in terms of sort of how it handles in, you know, GT7 and kind of the setup we use to grind money, it just doesn't feel sort of as alive or as fun and enjoyable. It's very sort of on rails and just feels a little bit sluggish in comparison to the rest of the gt500 cars now when i did my grinding method this came out with a time of 26 minutes 37.224 um, not really that good in comparison to some of the other times however during that run i did have a accident um, which kind of sort of hindered the time um, and it's kind of a running theme with some of these uh, some cars kind of had a bit of a worse time due to you know accidents and such but they do happen when you're grinding money the ai is absolutely you know i guess how could you put it uh, in, a, in, a, in a nice way they're a little bit dumb 
uh, not always the brightest and sometimes it act like you're not there and that's basically what happened to this car it really did affect its run um, but overall the run was just not very memorable at all it was kind of you know just not a fun car to drive now in its standard form is actually a great car to drive um, especially out of you know all the 08 models um, it's definitely more fun than uh, say the Lexus SC430 in its standard trim when you're kind of racing it around however when it comes to doing a 800 pp build and um, basically you know setting it up for that event it just didn't feel i guess as good as the other cars it just kind of felt a bit lifeless and a bit sort of just there so for me it's sixth place and it's last sadly So into the top five now and in fifth place I've put the Honda NSX Concept GT 2016, the first modern car on this list, sadly all the way down in fifth. Now the reason for this I'll sort of get into, um, if you do want to purchase this car though it is very good in its standard form, very very fast and I would actually say it's probably the best of the modern GT 500s when it comes to one lap pace and it's only 800k. Now, when it comes to grinding, this car was like kind of hit and miss with me. Something just felt off with it. And again, I feel like it falls into the category of, you know, what the GTR was like, where it kind of felt so easy to drive that there just wasn't much character into it. So when you're driving it around, you just feel like you're sort of on rails, the car's not moving around much. And in the video, you know, quite recently, I said it felt like an endurance build and it really did. Um, it never really got onto sort of the one lap pace potential this car actually has in its more standard form. So it kind of did hinder it. Overall, it came out with a time of 25 minutes 45.592, which isn't too shabby at all. And that is with two accidents as well during that run to really kind of hold it back. So there is a possibility this could have actually been the quickest overall. Now, that kind of you know makes up with the car like it really does kind of say that this is a good car for grinding and that setup really does work however it was just again there was just something kind of off with the build and i think it was just because the car is usually very lively uh, when you kind of put in laps in or racing it however when it came to just grinding with it again it just didn't feel quite right and it's kind of put it this high up the grid because it just didn't feel as fun as the other cars So in fourth place, we have the original GT500 grinding car. I absolutely fell in love with this car when I first used it. This is the Lexus SC430 GT500 from 2008. And I honestly have a massive soft spot for this car. Now it's 800K, which is pretty much going to be the normal price um, going forward with these, you know, cars. So a decent entry point, you know, price points not too bad and it pretty much pays for itself within a couple of races. Now, when it comes to grinding, it just feels a little bit more, I guess, sluggish and heavier than some of the other cars. Now, I, it is very, very good at doing a no-stop strategy. It's also very good at sort of outright pacing. It's kind of, I guess, a jack of all trades cars, master of none. Now, it, while it feels good, no matter what you do with it, again it just shows that it's just sort of there um when it comes to how it feels when you're grinding with the build and such um definitely i guess a more bonus point goes to the fuel consumption this thing um i just felt like this car was definitely the best in terms of you know tire wear and fuel consumption but again it just sort of puts it in that category of that it's a good car all around but it doesn't kind of stand out for anything really there's no sort of you know the way it feels or the outright speed that kind of makes it stand out from the rest of the cars in this list now when we did grind with it we did an overall time of 25 minutes 42 seconds 0.102 so nothing to really turn your nose up at a decent time and this was obviously the original and you know i just remember kind of using it out of the blue before these kind of gt500 cars became popular for grinding and i basically just thought Do you know what if this one is this good you know how good are the others and i always feel like this has been sort of the overlooked gt500 car um i guess another kind of plus point as well is the sound of this thing when you're driving it or watching it in replays definitely is you know in the top two however for me there is another car 
that kind of beats it in that area. So fourth place on the grinding list, not too bad, pretty much in the middle. So this is a car that I wish I didn't have to put sort of bang in the middle of the list. However, it is a top three car. This is the Nissan GTR Nismo GT500 from 2016. Perhaps the most popular of the GT500 cars we currently have in Gran Turismo uh, 7. Coming in at the standard price point of 800k. So, you know, nothing to kind of complain about there. And it's definitely a step up from the 08 model. Uh, for me, both in looks and terms of sort of price point and feel. Now, when it comes to grinding, again, the pace is definitely there for this car. Overall, we did a lap, uh, sort of total grind time of 25 minutes, 34 seconds, 0.251. So definitely no slouch. One lap pace was good. Overall pace was excellent. You know, it is possible to do a one and a two stop strategy with this car. Um, both pretty much, you know, decent when it comes to grinding. However, it was just kind of the feeling of the car. It felt very sort of robotic and sort of like there wasn't much feeling in the car. And that kind of just let it down overall. Now, as much as, you know, I can praise it for being insanely quick and insanely consistent, which it definitely is. It was just, again, like I said, just not too much feeling when it comes to pure driving feel and fun. Um, it feels as if, you know, a bit like the Toyota. You're kind of just doing it because it's so fast and uh, that kind of punished it a few positions, but it is top three, just down to its outright pace. And it is definitely a worthy, you know, worthy of that top three. So in at P2, this is where the list got really difficult for me. It was either, you know, outright pace and feel of the car or just go with my heart. And I actually went with my heart. So second place, this is the Lexus RCF GT500 16. Definitely, you know, a standout when it comes to pace, feeling and all that good stuff. Um, really, you know, a hidden gem in terms of, you know, Gran Turismo 7 coming in at the standard price of 800k. When it comes to grinding, this thing is an absolute rocket. Not only on its one lap pace, but its overall pace. Even with a couple of errors, this came in at 25 minutes, 30 seconds, 0 0.603. So very, very quick, very, you know, enjoyable to drive. It handles well, it's consistent. And um, the lap times are always like really, really fast. And there's definitely no weakness to this car. Um, I think it looks great and it's definitely, I guess, the most underappreciated of the GT500 cars in my opinion. I feel like this one kind of gets overlooked for its kind of blocky look and people will more, you know, gra you know, gravitate towards the 2016 GTR or the 2016 NSX. But when it comes to just pure driving feeling for me, the Lexus is really up there as one of the standout cars in the game. Weight, weight wise, it feels perfect. You know, you feel like you can really eat up them corners without it feeling really heavy, although it really does look heavy um, in comparison to something like the GTR. Um, the sound design of it is just absolutely awesome. So you've got that awesome engine note whilst you're you know, racing around, grinding money. And like I said, when it comes to just performance and speed, it's no slouch in them areas and it really is, you know, deserving it possibly of even first. But again, I had to go with my heart and put my personal preference first. Um, like I said, when it comes to pure fun, that's what it's kind of all about when you're grinding, you know, so often for so many credits. Uh, which means that sadly this car did have to take second. However, if you want to go for outright pace, this is definitely the one to look at. So in first place, it's definitely a love it or hate it car. And for me, I absolutely love this thing. This is the Honda NSX GT500 from 2008. Coming in at the standard price point of 800k and is definitely the most lively and fun car of the bunch. Really keeps you on edge while grinding and it is a very, very capable and usable car with probably the most beautiful engine note of the bunch. Um, it's an absolutely great car. So when it comes to grinding, this actually didn't perform too well. However, that was down to my mistake for hanging out on the tight uh, medium compound for just a little bit too long. 
um, and spinning off a couple of times. However, I feel like when it comes to just outright pace, this really could be up there challenging some of those more modern uh, GT500 cars. Overall, this did a time of 26.06.082. Now, that doesn't sound great, but like I said, it was probably easily around about 30 seconds of just mistakes throughout that run. Um, obviously, I believe I actually left it in the video as well. Um, so, you know, silly me. But overall, probably the most enjoyable, lively car there is. A lot of people hate it because they think it's just too twitchy. However, for me, it feels absolutely perfect when you nail the corners with this thing. With that great exhaust note, it just makes grinding fun again. And that was the main thing for me, like I said in this list. It's just outright fun when it comes to using these cars. And for me, the Honda NSX GT500 from 2008, well, it's just outright fun. Um, it's what Grand Turismo should be, especially when we're putting all these hours into and all these cars to find a great usable grinding car throughout is always you know a pleasure and an absolute joy and for me it's probably the best looking as well that body kit is absolutely insane so for me it is the standout of the gt500 cars when it comes to sardinia and grinding those credits so that is going to be the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you watched it till the end i really appreciate that don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to take part in my recent poll to basically choose what happens next week i'm wanting to do another themed week um, at the time of doing this, Porsche is in the lead very close with Ferrari, so take a look at that. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.